Blender's Curve Deform modifier is absolutely fine, but it can be a little confusing to use. When you first select the curve, it needs to be lined up with the object, and then that object needs to be kept in line with the curve at all times. That's why I've created the Fit Curve modifier. With this modifier, when the curve is moved, the object is always kept in line with it. This can make the modifier a more intuitive alternative compared to Blender's built-in version. In this video, I'll show you how to install, use and get the best results with Fit Curve, including some important tips that will save you time. If you have any questions or issues, do get in touch via info at configurate.net or leave a comment below. Fit Curve is a modifier asset, not a traditional add-on, so it installs a little differently. First of all, in Blender, go to Edit, Preferences and select the File Paths tab. And then under Asset Libraries, click the plus button and select the folder where you saved the fitcurve.blend file. Then give the asset library a name if you wish and then save your preferences in the window. Now, when you add a modifier, you'll find Fit Curve under the Deform category in Blender's Modifier menu. With the modifier added onto the object you wish to deform, pick the curve by selecting it in the Curve Object box. The object should snap directly to the curve. Let's take a moment to look more closely at what the modifier is doing. Click the small TV icon to temporarily hide the modifier and look at the object we are deforming. By default, the modifier will deform the object along the curve using the x-axis. So when the object has no rotation, it must be pointed along this axis. The origin point of the object, shown by the small orange dot, is at the bottom of the object in this case. So when we switch the modifier on again, we can see that the bottom of the object is in line with the center of the curve. This is because the origin point is used to determine where the object is placed on the curve. So if I center the origin point by selecting Object, Set Origin, Origin to Geometry, the text will flow along the centre of the curve this time. It's important, therefore, to keep the object's origin point in mind, otherwise the object may not align correctly. Let's go with a more interesting example, fitting a spiral object around the curve object here. With the spiral object we wish to deform selected, go to the Modifiers tab and click Add Modifier. Under the Deform section, select Fit Curve. Then, with the modifier added, select the curve object we wish to deform to under the drop-down menu or by selecting the Object Picker. The object will look a little strange in this case because if we temporarily hide the modifier, we will notice that the object is running along the z-axis. So, if we re-enable the modifier and select the z-axis setting instead, the spiral will start to deform properly. Taking a closer look at the object, there are some parameters on the modifier we can play with. Firstly, we can control the radius of the object along the curve. We can also change the object's offset along the curve. We can also stretch the object along the curve if we wish, and as long as the curve's offset is set to zero, we can tick the Stretch to Fit option to fit the object perfectly along the curve's length. The last thing I'd like to show you in this example is that the modifier also supports Blender's built-in radius controls for points. Select the curve and press Tab to go into Edit Mode. Here, select one of the curve's endpoints and press the N key for the Side Tab menu. 
select the item tab if it is not already and with the point selected adjust the radius setting. You'll notice that the spiral becomes more pointed or more bloated at this end by changing this parameter for this point. Let's carry this on to a racetrack style setup. Here I have a basic object that I have repeated using an array modifier and then set to deform around a circular curve using the fit curve modifier. In this case, it is difficult to see the original curve because it is being occluded by the racetrack. To work around this, select the curve in the outliner in the top right and then go to the Object Properties tab. Under Display Properties, select the In Front checkbox. This will ensure the curve object is always displayed in front of any other objects so you may want to disable it later. With the curve selected and now visible, press Tab to go into Edit Mode again and select one of the points, perhaps where the racetrack curves. Press the N key again and go to the Item tab. As well as changing the radius, we can also change the tilt of the curve at this point. This will allow us to make the racetrack more curved in this case. Finally, remember to consider your object's topology, that is, the edges and faces that make up the object when deforming it. Going back to the text example, let's give it some thickness by going to the text tab and in the geometry section increasing the extrude setting. Now go back to the modifiers tab and on the fit curve modifier set the rotation to 90 degrees. You'll notice that the surface of the object's lettering seems distorted and distressed. In the viewport settings select the wireframe option to take a closer look. You'll notice that the distortion is coming because the object's wireframe was not designed to bend in this way. Ideally, the object needs evenly sized rectangular shaped faces to bend effectively. A quick workaround for this sort of issue with text and logos is to add a remesh modifier. Drag the modifier up so that it will run before the fit curve operation. Set the type to sharp, untick remove disconnected and then carefully increase the octree depth. This will automatically remake the object to have evenly spaced rectangular faces. Unticking the wireframe view, you should see a smoother result. Be careful, however, as this workaround can result in a large amount of faces and you may need to consider other retopology options for more complex objects. And that's how you use Fit Curve to align objects to curves in Blender. If you have any questions, email me on info at configurate.net or leave a comment below and I'll see you next time.